Welcome to Merkaba Chakras, where we talk Buddhism in the fifth dimension. Welcome to another podcast episode of Merkaba Chakras. I'm your host, Vaughn Galt, and today we bring back Dr. David R. Hawkins, Map of Consciousness students and engineers, Clayton Steadman and Jeffrey Stegman. Now, Dr. David R. Hawkins wrote in his books and lectures that a 500 level of consciousness is the beginning frequency of angelic beings. So with that, Clayton and Jeffrey, welcome back to Merkava Chakras. Great to be here. <laughs> Good to be here, Galt. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what what we're going to do is I'm going to hand over um, the space for you guys to begin the opening prayer that you do before any interview. So there you go. We usually, we usually do it when, when nobody's watching, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of setting up a consciousness field. You know, using the FLFE technology and our own consciousness coming together. Do you want to start it off and hand it off to Von Galt? And sure, I'll, I'll start it off and then I'll hand it off to you, Von Galt. Now, Von Galt, is, you, is your entire first name Von Galt? Would you like to be called Von or Von Galt? Or? Well, my um, I'm Laos and my entire first name is Von Pet or Von Pet, um, but everybody calls me Von. Okay. All right, so I'll, I'll start off. Um, I increase my conscious contact with you, Lord. Acknowledge your presence in this moment as we come together as a community to support each other and coming closer to you. As I increase my conscious contact, I ask you to come all the way to me in the in the ways that I might not be able to come all the way to you. I ask you to create a protocol of protection around Vaughn, Jeff, and myself so that only energies of pure light and intent come into the space we occupy and share and to surround all the people now and in the future that are listening to this interview with that same protection so that they can discern their own thoughts and connect with you in their own way. And I'll pass it over to you, Vaughn. Okay, that was wonderful. I love a good, a good blessing ceremony. Okay, so before we get into the fascinating research that your company has uh, found since the last interview we had, and you guys, if you haven't watched the last episode with uh, Clayton and Jeff that I did about FLFE technology, it's in the show description, so go ahead and click on that. But um, before we get into the fascinating work and the new discoveries, can you tell us how you even got into this space in the first place? Let's okay. Give us a quick background. Well, Clayton and I have been working together. Um, I was, I've been in business and manufacturing for most of my life and uh, creating high consciousness environments or business environments. And Clayton and I came together and we're working on consciousness and raising con raising our own personal conscious. Clayton was coaching me in that and um, introduced us, introduced me to the technology, to the F to a precursor to the FLFE technology to activate high consciousness fields. And we worked with that as a service project around the world and then turned it into the FLFE business. But I'll pass it over to Clayton to fill in the gaps there. Yeah, it's a bit of a story. I mean, um, we didn't intend to start FLFE as a business. We we discovered that the technology could do good, and we modified it quite a bit from 
where a group of vendors had, had taken it to. It was originally intended to be a free energy device. There was three men that worked together for about seven years. And eventually they just ran out of money, Vaughn. You know, eventually if you don't make something commercialized, you have to either find more money or or stop. And so they, uh, one of the gentlemen was retired. He kept going because it was his hobby. And the other two, you know, they were working at it part-time and they, they just went back to what they were doing. So, yeah, it was just before uh, 2012 and the lead up to uh, December 21st, 2012, we were probably, yeah, for about a year before that, we were doing service work and um, we were finding, well, we were calibrating using muscle testing, the lowest consciousness parts of a continent. And we would find that place and we would put a version of the FLFE service on it in such a way that we adhere to the law of non-interference. So you can only put things up to a certain level and then beyond that you need to have people's permission. So we would put that area of the continent on and we would find that the whole continent would go up in consciousness. Not very much, but it did help. So we we just went around the world uh, and did that. We did it for about an hour every morning. And then after uh, December 21st, we um, kind of celebrated and and um, just kind of checking in one day, I guess, I, I guess, Jeff. And we just had the thought that we should consider doing this as a business. So the business actually started September 21st, sorry, September 24th, 2013. Nice. Right over the, the changeover. Yeah. Uh, right over the changeover in Buddhism, 2012 or 2555 Buddhist era was a changeover mm. from the Earth's uh, processional cycle mm. that all the indigenous tribes and many Buddhist uh, monasteries um, did awakening ceremonies to welcome the new energy of, on Earth, which is a higher frequency and welcome the new consciousness of the beings living on earth and into and of higher frequencies so a lot can be talked about um with these higher consciousness frequencies so before we kind of get into the science that you guys have uncovered with the technology um i'm going to give new listeners who haven't listened to the precursor episode which again is in the show description some background an understanding on how a 500 and above level of consciousness, which is the energy field that we emit from within our body, from within our essence um, and all around us, changes our reality, like mm. literally changes our physical reality. Mm. Uh, so we're not going to go too much into changes to reality, but we're going to talk about the level of, of consciousness. So I'm a, there's a couple of bullet points that, because I'm a student of um, David R. Hawkins, I got his picture over here. And um, and if you have combed over everything he's ever said, every single presentation he's ever had, um, these are some of the core things about Dr. David R. Hawkins that um, are, are notable. One, Dr. David R. Hawkins was a top doctor who ran a large mental health facility in New York. He used kinesiology in his practice to discover that everyone has a unique energy frequency based on the level of consciousness they emit from their presence. So he was doing this on all his mental health patients to see what was going on and was noticing that there was a difference. And the more in wellness they were, the higher the frequency he was getting for their energy field or their level of consciousness. So that fluid energy signature goes up and down in intensity based on their consciousness level, otherwise more commonly known as your moral compass. Mm -hmm. And when truly tested, the true resonance of the person shines outward, which res reinstates their true level of consciousness. So the map of consciousness is a tool when used properly can help measure truth, Versus falsehood in anything, in anyone, in any agenda, in any being, especially when your intuition is not so clear about foggy situations in your life. It shakes out the fakes from the real. And, and in this day and age, it's really hard sometimes to find 
true spiritual teachers, true integrity in things. And so Dr. David R. Hawkins gave us a tool that one of many tools that are provided to us to use in times when it's really hard to tell the difference. Dr. David R. Hawkins said in his lectures that he was happy living with source in the spiritual emptiness of void. In Buddhism, we would call this nirvana. However, he popped into his toddler body when his dad was trying to resuscitate him during an accident in the snow. He remembers his direct connection with God and was told that he needed to complete his tasks in this lifetime to raise consciousness on earth before returning home back to source. So David R. Hawkins speaks about not that he reincarnated over and over again in samsara within creation or existence, but that his he made it all the way to source and he is from source and came back out and he's going to go back to source. And that's one of the hardest things in Buddhism to do is to let go of your ego and everything you identify it in and we get reabsorbed mm-hmm. with so, with God, basically God consciousness source and go back, go back home because the game is so addictive. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that is a frequent conversation that Buddhists have about reincarnation and about Nirvana. Like, why is it so addicted? So the last thing about Dr. David Hawkins was that Dr. Hawkins believed it was to to bring the map of consciousness to humanity so that they can have a tool to find the lighthouse through heavy fog. That was his purpose. He also found through his research that 500 plus level of consciousness is the beginning level of angelic beings incarnated on our planet which we all are at that level. There is a, in his research, there is a spiritual split off of humanity into another parallel reality that he calls homo spiritus. So guys, I hope that was a good highlight rail um, of Dr. Hawkins. Is there anything else that you want to add that's important to notate? Well, I'll mention that 500 is the start of love on the Hawkins map, and then raising in vibration from there up into unconditional love and into 600s, the nonlinear realms. And um, so being in that love zone helps us, I think, connect to our essence and our true self and helps us to be who we are, to be in a consciousness field that supports us to be, you know, at that I guess you could say core level of, of, of uh, consciousness. You know, the, the one thing is the one thing that I found very fascinating about both of you guys is you guys are mirror images of each other. And, um, mm-hmm. and, <laughs> and, and this is how I explain it. This is how I explain it. Because in, um, in Buddhism, we, we have the belief and many teachers teach this to the students as well. Um, in terms of working with the spirit world in physical reality within samsara. Um, And that is using synchronicity to kind of help you guide your path so that you stay on track with Mm -hmm. what you charted for yourself to experience in this sojourn. Mm -hmm. And um, synchronicity oftentimes manifests in mirrors, mirroring of things. So what you're working on, your answer will come to you, all that kind of stuff. Um, if If you make a thought, it'll be answered in a song in a, on the radio or somebody will come by and, and have that exactly what you need. So it's, it, it's like <laughs> following the bread, breadcrumbs. It's mirroring back to your answer. And the thing that I found very, very interesting about both of you guys, when I first saw you guys, is I saw your name. I don't think it's an accident that your last name are mirror <laughs> images of each other. <laughs> <laughs> Dead man, S-T-E-D-M-A-N-N. Um, and that's your last name and if you mirror that and flip it over it's steg man that's jeffrey's last name which is s-t-e-g-m-a-n so instead of one instead of two m's it's one n so i thought that was really hilarious i immediately saw that when i first interviewed you guys and i died laughing for about 30 minutes because i thought that was the funniest way to incarnate these two gentlemen into this reality (laughs) and what are they doing they're raising consciousness through their technology through um frequencies to get people into the angelic human frequencies and above. 
on their sojourn back to source. So let's go through the research. I'm going to share my screen and we're going to talk about um, the latest published updated research results that you found evidence of. So I'm going to share my screen. So what we're looking at is we're actually looking at the flfe.net website. So uh, when you go to the website, you can subscribe to the service and the service sends the frequency of love, which is 500 and above, over to you. And um, I have my customer portal here and it has a slider on the map of consciousness scale, you know, all the way up to 570 and then it also has the boots feature which 600 level of consciousness for 30 minutes per day and then 850 level of consciousness for two minutes per day that's the newest feature since the last time we interviewed um do you guys i already boosted on this because here's my secret to the episodes you guys I start at an 850 boost on every episode I record just to start up high and then I boost it to 600 and then carry on um, the recording just to give it the highest level of consciousness and good energy as possible. But can you explain what the difference between these boosts are for people who are unfamiliar with it? Uh, on the consciousness slider, Avon, you can slide it all the way up to 570, as you've mentioned. The default starting uh, level of consciousness is 550. Um, some people find adjusting to the energy might take a little bit of time, so they um, they'll they'll bring it down to a place where it's comfortable. You know, some people say it's the best sleep they've ever got when they turn the service on, and some people find the extra energy makes them a bit restless, so they turn it down at night, and then they turn it up in the morning, and that gives them that gives their body some time to adjust. So the level of consciousness on the slider or the boost is the level of consciousness of your entire uh, property. Assuming, mm -hmm. it's less than, assuming it's less than five acres. So on the Hawkins map of consciousness, 550 is, as Jeff said earlier, the, the level of unconditional love. So 500 is love, 540 to 560-ish is unconditional love. 600 is peace, the beginning of enlightenment. 700 is the classic levels of enlightenment. I'll start there, and they go up to a thousand out of a thousand. Each um, each level of consciousness Vaughn, in the body has a has a correlative number of microwatts of energy in the body as well, and so it does take time for the body to adjust to holding more energy. That's why we talk about uh, consciousness nutrition in terms of essential fatty acids and magnesium, uh, and um, other supplements that uh, we suggest that people take so that their nervous systems can adapt to the energy uh, as easy as, as possible. Clayton, what are the supplements that people typically take to be compatible with uh, the new energy that you're, the technology send to their home? Well, what we discovered, Vaughn, was that the critical factor in the body, the, the area of the body that you can put the least amount of effort in and get the most amount of gain in terms of uh, raising consciousness is almost always the nervous system. Mm. And the critical factor in the nervous system is the myelin sheath. That's the sheath that goes over the nerves. And the best food for the myelin sheath is we found um, magnesium and essential fatty acids. And I'll, I'll pass it to Jeff. As they're taken within 30 minutes of each other, uh, they, it creates a synergy. So um, why don't you pick up on that one, Jeff? Yeah, and we've, we followed the work of some Olympic bodybuilding coaches where they discovered that the nerves were really the sometimes the limiting factor for, for large, you know, lifting large things. Um, that actually the nerves feeding the, the muscles were the factor. And they were using exactly the same protocol that we had come up with, which if, if uh, once someone goes on the free trial or they, they um, subscribe, they can go to this resource section that you see here. And inside of that, if you click on that, Vaughn. Which one, the, the mobile the, phone? No, the resource down at the bottom, bottom right. Okay. 
you'll see there is a um, um, supplement section. So as, and these are all resources for people on the free trial or subscribers. We have meditations. And so in that section, there's protocols um, for supporting the body in a high consciousness field. So what we're doing is we're activating a field with the FLFE service and it's a consciousness field. It's a little different than frequencies. So you could say that everything is a frequency and, and, and you, but it's a level of consciousness. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's, you know, different, we show different sources for magnesium, for essential fatty acids. Mm-hmm. Um, sunflower lecithins is another, mm-hmm. um, is another uh, supplement that's really uh, important for our nervous system. Mm-hmm. So I think you're in the gematria section there, but uh, yeah, it's one, you, one of the partners that offer these supplements. Yeah, gematria is a innovative company in 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 the nutrition and mm-hmm. um, a supplement field. But yeah, so we have a whole protocol listed here, and it is a ratio of essential fatty acids to magnesium. Oh, these are high dosage too. 4,000 milligrams, 6,000 milligrams, 8,000 of uh, vitamin D3. Yeah, and these are for short periods of time. Oh, okay. To really help with the, the the acclimation process. So it's not something you would continue for a long time. And that's the way the protocol's laid out. Mm. So... Mm -hmm. And again, that's why, um, you know, the boost that we were looking at, we have a 600 boost and an 850 boost just for two minutes um, because the body's nervous system needs to adapt. Right, Mm -hmm. right. And you have meditations in here as well. Um, We We do have meditations and most of those have fields on them. So when you watch the meditation, a field is activated. Um. Oh, so the meditation itself has the energy field? Yes. What, what is the typical energy field of the meditations offered on the website? Well, I believe they're at 700, Clayton. Most, um, most of them are at 700, yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? So you guys, so you guys, how did you find these meditations in the first place? We, we, we did these. These are ones that we recorded. Okay. Ourselves. And then you recorded yourself and then you measured it and um, through the technology and the, these meditations have... 700 or a higher frequency well think think about like in um in buddhism there's certain mantras and chants um certainly in 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 the hindu as well there's there's chants that people do in 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 these ancient languages that you could say activate a field and they're a type maybe a type of technology or they could be Mm -hmm. um but what we're doing is we're using the flfe technology to sort of attach a field to the video. And then when someone watches the video, the field opens. Mm. Um, it's okay. just much like the FLFE technology. Once you sign up for the free trial that, or come on as a subscriber, the field is activated. Um, and it's a consciousness field, very much like human consciousness can activate when two or more people get together or if mm-hmm. you're sending blessings to someone else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In the Bible, it now says when three or more, just so you know, oh, different, re- different reality. <laughs> it's not two or more. You're from the old reality. I guess um, so. Yeah. Uh, more, more the merrier. Yeah. I, I, I start, <laughs> it starts with two. It starts with two. Um, polarity, right, left, up, down. It always starts with two for a reason, not three mm-hmm. or more, but, that's how it's going to trick you. Um, so these, are they also on YouTube and other video sharing sites if somebody wanted to try these meditations themselves first? No, we 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 keep them inside because the field is relatively high. Mm, so mm-hmm. this is a special resource for subscribers and people on the free trial. So, But the free trial is free, so people can just get on the free trial right. and then go in and experience these resources. Um, here's a here's share the free trial, right? So you can send you can share the love, share the love. <laughs> oh, awesome! Yeah, so um, there there is a couple of different products that people can choose. Let me go to it here. 
with F L F E. So there's the one that you send to your home, which I have. Yep. There's the one that you send to your phone, which I use too. I sent I sent this one to my husband because he he he's in a cover band and he's around like five hundred to thousands of people at a time. Mm, mm. Um, you know, he has eighty cover eighties cover band um for festivals, casinos, etc. So I just mm. I want him to always be around that field. And then mm-hmm. you can send it to objects as well. So like your wedding ring or your mm-hmm. car. So if you mm-hmm. if you are somebody I had a client tell me that she's always paranoid about her teenage daughter driving mm-hmm. um if, in the car because she's not a a skilled driver yet. So she sends the F L F E energy to the car <laughs> <laughs> just to make sure that she stays out of trouble. But it's, it's a lot a, of innovative ways people are using this uh, yeah this yeah, this yeah people exactly i have a lot of people that because I, I i do quantum hypnosis and six sense consultations to um and i have clients this is one of the recommendations i have is try the free trial if you like it you can subscribe to the service and have the energy sent to wherever you want but people send it to wedding rings all the time just kind of like remember me mm-hmm. um <laughs> Send it to car. <laughs> I've had people send it to broken appliances just to see if that will fix it, <laughs> or make it, or make the um make the energy like consume less energy, but still produce really really good outcomes. So there's a lot of different ways that people have been created with, with where they send the energy. Um, they've sent it to. There's a lot of different things. So, so there's the yeah we and we've talked about it in. I don't know if we talked about it last time, but when you're in the field, when you're in a high consciousness field like this, you can personally direct the energy too. So you could send it to someone else, send it to a part of your body you think needs healing. So we can, we can kind of use the field as a resource and use our own personal, you know, amazing ability to move energy, to move even more energy to a place. So how does one who is using the service to get, energy sent to them how do they redirect that energy elsewhere well if you think about it it's 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 like a reservoir it's like you're dipping in to a reservoir of energy that's all around you and it's in your it's in your body and as you rise in consciousness your personal level of consciousness and your personal power to create whatever it is you want to create is there and so your body's your system, your whole system, not just your body is pulling this in and then you can project it, you know, you send it wherever you wish, just like sending a blessing to someone or doing Reiki with someone um, much the same way, but you just have more available to you. Mm-hmm. Would, would you say something else to that, Clayton? Is there more you'd like to say? Well, if you're praying for somebody, you're holding them in mind and you're consciously directing your thoughts. And then those thoughts are hopefully positive energies. So that's the same way you would work with uh, FLFE, Vaughn, as you would, you would, um, you know, kind of see the energy coming onto the property and then redirect that to, for example, your husband when he is, uh, when he's playing music. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And by the way, that the phone has a 300 foot radius around it, the phone service. So that your husband's not only, you're not only helping your husband, you're helping all of the the people that are listening to him within a 300 foot radius. You know, I have to say that um, that the, we get reports from people. My husband doesn't play in every single band show because there's conflicts of schedule. Mm-hmm. But we get reports that um, the shows that he plays in has higher attendance and there's. <laughs> And the the because the 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 venues they make the money through the bar, and the restaurant tabs, um, they have a higher um, have a higher bill. Sales, yeah. That they, they have higher sales. So um, and people just have more fun. I, I, I don't know if you can equate what fun, yep. how to measure fun, but mm-hmm. if you but in a concert setting, it's ticket sales and then also um, merchandise. But in in the sense of a bar or a casino, it's it's the 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 bar tab that that says is a good night or not. <laughs> so, um, and so, and when he's not in the show, it's a lower attended show, and the venue obviously is not making as much. 
So I don't know if there's any relation to that, but that seems to follow this flow of thought. So well, fun fun is a high consciousness field. Oh, okay, <laughs> that's good. That's good. So so for all you guys out there, all guys guys and gals, if you guys are doing an event or you are doing a church event, a spiritual retreat, a healing retreat, you're going to a PTA meeting, uh, you're going to your child's um, band recital, whatever. Send the the energy field over to that location through through your cell phone or through the whatever um, product you're using with F L F E, and then see what happens. Um, mm-hmm. Oftentimes, after a while, you recognize the pattern that when you show mm-hmm. up, it's a party. Mm-hmm. When you leave, <laughs> it's died down. So I've and I've had that reported with many of my um, clients as well who have tested it for themselves. So you you guys also, since the last time, started your podcast, Fields of Consciousness. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is free, and you guys can listen to that. And what kind of c- conversations can they look forward to in the podcast? Well, we're really focused, as the name says, on consciousness fields that are all around us all the time as we walk around uh, in this dimension. There's you know, high fields, like you walk into uh, some sanctuary or pilgrimage place or, you know, a mosque or a cathedral that where people have prayed, you know, for for decades, maybe hundreds of years, there's that uplifted high consciousness field. And then there's low fields. And how does that feel? And how does that interact with us? And there's also thought forms that are interacting with us all the time. And Actually, a fairly small percentage of our thoughts are actually our thoughts, you know, depending on your level of consciousness. Who's the, whose thoughts are they that most people are having psycho in their mind? Depends on your level of consciousness. If you have a low level of consciousness, a lot of the thoughts you pick up are from the, uh, we'll say the static, the mental static and the airways of the human experience. If Can you give a, us an example of, of common thoughts that people pick up? Well, Jeff, we remember that the time we talked about uh, the exhibitions where people mm-hmm. are. Um, so we, we did, we, on one of our podcasts, we talk about where your thoughts come from. We have some on like luck and synchronicity and we have biohacking and there's all kinds of things we, we talk about, um, you know, boundaries, Earth Day and shadow work. So. We were talking about um, what happens at a fest, at a like a an exhibition where you go there and you smell the food and you start thinking about having mini donuts or stuff that you usually don't eat that not you know usually not that good for your digestion and you have like an extremely you know unusually strong thought. It's because all those people are eating those donuts, right? Or those mini donuts, or whatever they are, the pretzels or the you know corn in the cob, and so there's a thought field around those vendors, mm-hmm. and oftentimes people will you know when the exhibition's left, they may walk by that same place and have that still that thought form is still there, because thoughts are things and they are held in the energetic structure of our homes, for example, in the drywall because it's rock, which is a form of crystal, and the foundations. Um. It's really interesting. In the East, they understand this much more than the West. I have a friend who was married to a Japanese woman. He was saying that in the neighborhood they were shopping for a home in, the homes where somebody had left because they couldn't afford the home, those homes sold for less than a home where the person had uh, left because they got a promotion and upgraded their house because they believe that, you know, mm-hmm. in the in the principle of feng shui, that this how must have much have better luck or better, you know, I don't know what the word they use for it, but better luck was what I remember. Yeah, it has more chi, more chi or life yeah. life force. It has more of the essence of more light in it, higher consciousness, all all the above. You know, the thing that I wanted to say about about that concept of thought, thought forms not being yours, and and this is this is one of the basic lessons in Buddhism, is that um, all form comes from thought. So your your spirit had a thought and then it created the energy field that created the form. 
and everything in in creation is separated by its frequencies to hold that form. And um, and so if you wanted to change a form of something, you just change the frequency. And they know this in science when they do um, light research that if you send the frequency of a, and I'll put this in the show description so you guys can go to the research. If you put the frequency of a frog into a salamander egg, that salamander egg will hatch a frog and vice versa. So the light that comes through does change the DNA structure of the physical um, object or being based off of the energetic codes in that light frequency. Okay. So it's, 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 it's the same thing in anything. So if you want to raise your experience, you raise the energy field, hence you raise the consciousness. And when everything is energy and all of this is, created as a as a projection of the user um that's how you change physical reality so not to get too es- esoteric but what mm. we found oftentimes and what many people in buddhism work on is trying to have clean and clear thoughts on what mm. they want to create into mm. form and when you think about it and this is a simple practice most people when they wake up to when they fall asleep are being inundated by propaganda, by other people's melodramas, by things that have no relevance to what they want to create in their life. And 24 hours that go by, and then they may only have an hour or two hours where they're actually focusing on the things that they want to see, that they enjoy, the things that they like to do. So most of the time, when you when you cut out all of the news, all of the um, stories that you pick up on on this and that, all of the drama from this person and that person, and all the different ways that we're getting information, and you cut that out to only the stuff that's relevant to what you're working on and how you want to create your life. Most people are not living um, a couple hours a day of their mm-hmm. own life. They're living other people's lives mm-hmm. and it, it doesn't serve them. So if you can imagine spending 24 hours a day on focusing mm-hmm. on your life, what would it create? And that's the challenge is to declutter all of that right. messy thought forms. And that's part of the part of the purpose of FLFE is to activate that clear space for you to be in to to be free as much as possible of 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 those and to be more connected to source and in a higher vibration so that you can be your own uh highest self coming through or you know to create the life that's that that you want to create through your intentions right so um there's a lot of testimonials um on mm-hmm. the website that people can go through but um Again, you could try the um, the te- the temporary service just for a, a trial period, and then if you like it, you can you can go from there. Now, I wanted to ask one thing before we go into the research. Um, I wanted to ask with the booze, the eight fifty, and then the six hundred booze. Why don't you start at six hundred? Just so, off the, the off the bat, yeah, the service for. Well, again, it comes back to the nervous system and um, hydration is the other piece that um, because that supports the nervous system, it supports all parts of the body. But yeah, if you start too high, people need acclimation time. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have the slider. So it starts at 550 and then people can move it up to 570 and then they can use the boost to to give themselves that kind of a reset. Um, that creative space, that extra energy for some something that they're doing. And um, it's just not everybody's ready for it, Vaughn. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, because I'm, I'm always like, hey, why don't you guys just start me at 700 all day long <laughs> and then just roll it up to like a thousand and just let it go for 30 minutes at a time. Um, so, because, that, so it's not a restriction. Your space is probably much higher than that. Already. Well, I started at 500 already before I used the service. Yes, your home, your home over the last month 
is 698% of the time, 600 or higher, 98% of the time. Oh, really? You guys have been spying on me? <laughs> I just I just tested it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I started the I started. I started at five hundred before I started the service. So then I, don't, I started yes, the service. I'm like, I don't really feel high. a that's, difference. If your home is at five hundred to start, you're in the top one percent of all homes on the planet. Mm, mm. You probably hide your home feng shui. I would imagine if you're in in boot in, uh, in that line of thinking. Yeah, yeah. No, it 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 is it is it is um it is design and, and feng shui and mm. on all that good stuff. But we had some um lower entity beings in here that we had to kick out first too. So yeah. and then we we did the blessing ceremony, we did the smudging, we did everything. We wrote mm. our own um meditation and my husband and I went through and my husband's he's he's a howley. So um so the howley and the wahini went around every single room of our own meditation that we came up with and we we walked through the corner and just blessed the whole thing because we have we know we have a high energy field so we blessed the whole thing um and then shortly afterwards i started the flfe service and i already started at 500 so i didn't really feel a difference so i'm like kicking 700 so um but then i, I saw the booze that the last time yeah. so i love that but the plants but, notice the difference in your house right the plants do notice a difference yes. in my house um they they love it um, so the, they, they grow and my banana tree the last time in the last episode, it, it had just shot like crazy, um, grown in a month and we have like nine foot tall ceilings. So I don't know what I'm going to do when it, it grows over that. <laughs> so that's a new problem. Um, because my tropical plants can't be outside in Washington cold weather. So we'll, we'll figure out something. Um, but the, the thing is, is that. For some people who live in this field and energy work and consciousness work and metaphysics is the everyday, uh, and this is just normal for them. And I have children as well, and this is normal for them. So, um, and we work on consciousness uh, creation and work out our issues so that we don't manifest the same bad habits and in, in how we we create our reality. Mm -hmm. um, for some of those people, is there any kind of beta testing in the future to test out uh, the next level subscription if you're ready for 600 all the time or 700 all well, the time or anything like that? What what happens is, um, I mean, the surrounding area is not as high, right? So w your energy is lifting up the space. So without FLFE, you have, your energy is doing the work. So FLFE is helping, basically helping you keep the space high, but it's also not, there, there's not a ceiling, right? Mm -hmm. It's helping the energy go to 600. So, so the, the support there for healers, for people doing, doing this kind of work is they don't have to use their personal energy to raise the space. Mm -hmm. It's already up there. Mm -hmm. So that takes a lot less energy. And then as things kind of keep going higher through their own, through their own work. Yeah. With the yeah. Support. The, the one thing that we were talking about a little bit before the show as well is with the, the, the frequency and how much the nervous system of any particular people can handle the higher frequencies is that when you start testing out the booze, some people couldn't handle it because it was bringing up the skeletons in their closet. It was bringing up, um, unresolved issues, dense uh, programs that they had unconscious, unconsciously created reality from. And so it was, it was bringing up a lot of chaos in their lives. Do you want to speak on how higher frequencies bring these issues up for you to resolve? Well, we work on, we work on the principle of trying to do what's in the highest and best interest of all creation. And so when we're using kinesiology, to test the most appropriate level to set the service at, the inquiry would be something along the lines of, it is in the highest and best interest of all creation to set the base level of the service at 500 or 550 or 600. And so, you know, we do extensive testing on that. And uh, we found that the optimal level for us to start uh, people at uh, the public is around around 550. Mm -hmm. And so you can slide it up higher. Now, 
it's it's easy to forget that one point up on the Hawkins map of consciousness is 10 times higher than the point below it. So 551 is 10 times higher than 550. Mm -hmm. So to go from 550 to 560 even is 550 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, 10. You know, it's it's an extremely high amount of energy. So, uh, and there is a process when there's people who've been on the path for a long time, a process of discernment they have to go through to recognize that there is an additional help in the environment. And so when one of the original emails we send out, there's 22 different ways to recognize, at least the last time I looked at that email, there was 22 different ways to recognize the beneficial support of the service in your home. And for some people like yourself, Vaughn, it's the response of their plants or their pets or their children that, mm -hmm. that they notice it and 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 that in in that situation, they notice that more than they notice in themselves. Or they notice it when people come over. People come over and you know they don't want to leave. They want to hang out. It's like they're being at it's like they're at the party when your husband's at you know playing his music. Mm -hmm. People love being in a high consciousness field. We all do. We all want to be in a loving environment. So when they're there, they'll maybe spend a little more money at the restaurant. They may drink a bit more because they're having fun and they'll stay and enjoy mm -hmm. themselves. And so there's many ways to discern the influence. You just have to find your way. Mm, that's good to know. Okay, so let's go over some of the, the research. Um, so the first research that, I, that really caught my eye was the Emoto water crystal experiment. So Dr. Um, Emoto of Japan, he's deceased now, but he's very well known in the metaphysical research space of um, taking water from all over the world and then testing it to see if, um, if it forms, what it forms. And um, he found that the higher the energy of the water, the more it formalizes um, into an image. And the more positive the energy, the more it formalizes into like like a Buddha or um, a crystal or anything else like that. But if it's a low negative energy, it doesn't form at all. So which means that water and we're like over 80 percent water as people respond to the positive, reassuring love and frequencies rather than negative. So um, I pulled this up and let's let's go over this. So. Um, what did you guys do? How did you guys do this experiment? Well, with with the, with the Emoto Lab in Japan, um, you're shipping water. You know, it's going on an airplane. It's so we we needed to activate the FLFE field in the water in such a way that it would retain that field to the lab, and as they poured it into the 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 uh, the ice cube trays or however they freeze the ice. So, so that was a little bit of a challenge to understand, okay, we have um, a control and then we have an FLFE everywhere that we, that we use to put on the water. And then we had FLFE property, which we put on the water. Essentially the container that the water was in was the, the property, the boundaries mm -hmm. of the property. And so, and we, it did the best we could to keep the control free of those fields. But of course, you know, we have fields around us all the time. So we filled up the water in a different place without my phone nearby. Mm. But as you can see, the control is actually not bad looking, you know? Yeah. It's not as bad as some controls. So either the water was, was really pretty good Here. where we got the mm. control or, or you know, they, it, it got into a higher field somehow, okay. but. Um, and then, and then FLFE everywhere, that's the frequency you sent to, to it. And it's bigger. And then the property one, it's even more it, formed. Yeah. The, yeah. The property one was, was what they call the beautiful hexagon, which is one of is the highest classification. Mm. And um, the. Uh, the everywhere was an inclined hexagon, so it was somewhat different. Um, and um, also one of the higher levels. And um, okay. these are some of the other crystal pieces that are shapes that are similar to 
uh, the the property one. Right. So this this one it was sent the frequency of truth. It was the modal peace project, and it it looks like a snowflake. Mm-hmm. Um, and then happiness and hope. So there's different shapes of snowflakes. Um, water crystals. Yeah. Water so crystals. The- yeah. And if yeah, if you scroll back up to the FLFV, you see uh, it's very similar to that truth. So when, so what does it mean when we're ingesting water that has FLFE energy in it, like the water at your house? Let's say you send the frequency to your house, and you're drinking the water in your house. Does it make a difference? Yeah, I mean when you bring in anything into your body. It's something we were talking about a little bit before we came on. The the higher the consciousness of what's coming into you, uh, it seems to be the better the body likes it. Um, just like if you were, you know, you took some water that, or some food that was prepared in a restaurant and there was a lot of fighting and, you know, strife in the kitchen that food may come out at a lower consciousness level because that those fields, you know, are retained in the, in, in the food. So, you know, what we discovered is that 850 is sort of the optimal level for food to come into your body. And how can we get our food to 850? Pray, pray on it. Um, Pray on it. Okay. mm -hmm. So before you ingest anything, I pray that this is 850 and above. Gratitude, you know, light, flowing light, asking light to flow into it, um, asking to raise the consciousness and the appropriateness as food for you. Right, right. Again, channeling that energy that's available to you into that food. Well, here is another um, one that's interesting. This one is the difference in how FLFE energy affects our brain. So this is the latest research and you have it on ions. They're they're doing a lot of research into the effect of um, consciousness and um, they did this. This is a preliminary experiment. This is a little bit older experiment, but it's it's a preliminary, which means it's a relatively small sample size. Okay. Uh, it was, it was um, I don't know if the end number is there. You'd have to look at the full report, but that's okay. So, so basically people came into their lab mm-hmm. and um, the uh, lab assistant was able to turn FLFE on and off in the lab. Mm-hmm. And what they did, uh, they, they, they put them in the full um, EEG, you know, helmet, and they were measuring brain waves in all parts of the brain. Mm-hmm. And um, they were, they saw an impact um where there was an increase so there you can see the participants and the whole uh, experiment is laid out here from ions and um, what they saw was in all, in all parts of the brain an increase in alpha waves okay in this relatively short time in the uh, FLFE uh, environment okay so so did they um so they had an increase in the alpha waves did they get into gamma or or any higher waves well, in that short period of time, they were it was with these people, and they were taking um, math tests. Mm-hmm. They were doing they were doing uh, cognitive t- testing during that time, so they were in yeah they saw an increase into alpha, and not not a lot further. There may have been some. Um, you can see the alpha frequency change, um, and there was an there were some different things they were asking people to do. They were breath counting. They had a Mm -hmm. math test and they did see an increase in the, in the scores in the math test as well. Mm. So my question as a parent is to help your, your children do well in school and not cry over, over over a math test or test that (laughs) they struggle with. Um, Do what, which product is best to help kind of stimulate better re- results for test taking and, and scholastic achievement well all, all the products are but we do have a, a product we call smarter emf that's lower cost for parents to to get for their children and put it on their phones if they wish 
Okay. So it helps mitigate the EMFs of the phone and it does also boost. Um, so more energy available and more energy for the brain and for what the brain's doing in these cognitive uh, experiences that kids have in schools. Okay. And what if they don't have, what if you don't have a teenager that has a phone that you can send the frequency to what do, you, you, send you it to do, their backpack or what? Yeah, you could do an object. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so yeah. it would have the same ef effect as the, the backpack would send the frequency to all the students within 300 feet of the field. So the whole class yeah. would do better. Uh, within nine feet of the backpack. So within nine feet of the backpack. Everywhere okay. is the nine feet. And then as Clayton said, the whole field goes out to 300, but the, the concentrated effect with the F of the fee uh, enhancements is all within nine, uh, nine feet of the object. Okay. So find, find an object that your child will have on them constantly close mm -hmm. to them. And that should be the object that you send the field to. And that would help stimulate the uh, scholastic achievement and make it easier for them to test take. Okay. Well, that's a good, that, that's good. Um, mm -hmm. And then the other one is, this one was interesting. Study of EMF mitigation using gas discharge visualization. You want to talk about this one? Yeah. And we can just actually just use it right. What's there. Um, and then we'll go up to a different, Oh, we can do this. So are you all right with me, Clayton, running through this? Oh, yeah, yeah. You're, yeah. you're, you're more familiar with this stuff than I am. So, so if you keep scrolling down, I'll, we'll get to the, to the main point. So gas to charge visualization is a very sensitive device to energy present. And it's showing that there's higher energy in the F of the fee environment. But if mm -hmm. you keep going, so this one right here, oops, that one right there. So what we did in this experiment was, we that we did a baseline and this is in a house there was plenty of emf devices there neighbors nearby wi-fi routers and that the red lines you see how it's very spiky up and down mm -hmm. that is the environment prior to flfe so that's the control and, and there, there's wild variability in the in the energy present in the environment mm -hmm. and and um when FLFE was turned on, the energy moved into the blue. So the blue was was with FLFE on. So the EMF environment became much less spiky, much less variable, more more harmonized in a in a narrow band. And that was very interesting to us um, because it really shows what we're experiencing when we turn on FLFE and we have EMF mitigation in it. Is, is a relaxing of the body, less anxiety, better sleep, as Clayton said. There's, there's these EMF uh, environment that we're in is very uh, stimulating to the body in not so good ways. And this kind of shows why that effect is happening. There's really a lower um, amount of stimulation. Mm. So if you, if you go back, there's, we did a much larger we, we did a study with EMF sensitives. It's one of the, if you go up towards the top, you'll see it. Um, yep, yeah, keep going. It's at the very this top. This one right here. This one? Yes. Common EMF sensitivity symptoms? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's funny you mentioned synchronicity. So the, it was a synchronicity that you mentioned synchronicities earlier in the talk because Dr. Gary Schwartz, is on our research team and he wrote the book super synchronicities mm -hmm. which i don't know if you've read that it's it, it, it i love for about, it yeah i love it yeah. well he's on our research team now well i'm telling you guys need to research on me research on me <laughs> send that me a thousand <laughs> and let's see how i'm telling you guys you need to start a beta testing to see okay what the regular people on their their spiritual journey, no problems, 550, and then slowly work your way up. <laughs> but for the energy healers, for the practitioners, mm -hmm. the people who are metaphysical, who, you know, this is this is their this is what they love to do. Get the um the energy healers, and they did this in scientific research. I'll put it in the show notes so you guys can read the science. Mm -hmm. That when they took um they took 
a a a, a bottle or a vial of DNA and they put it in the hands of a control group, regular people, and had them just hold it and just think thoughts of its um, uh, decoupling, uh, kind of, mm-hmm. kind of, you know, decoupling, so they could take in mm-hmm. more, more um, vitamins and and whatever DNA does. So they put it in regular people, and they got their results, and then they put it in a group of energy healers, like chiropractors, acupuncturists, um, mm-hmm. energy healers, qigong um, masters, uh, yoga instructors, energy healers, any kind mm-hmm. of energy healing practice possible. Um, mm-hmm. And they put it into all these participants of energy healers and they had them do the same exact experiment. And in the energy healing, they were fi- they were finding a consistent result that the DNA was expanding, that was it was decoupling it was doing what they wanted it to do so the energy field of energy healers is a higher frequency than just normal regular people who aren't in the spiritual path and they found a difference that it actually does change dna being in the presence Mm -hmm. of people of higher consciousness Mm -hmm. so all that research points the same way so if you're going to want to try to see if um Certain people can hold more energy in their nervous system. I, I'm telling you, you've got to try it on energy healers and see how much energy can they take in before they, they say, okay, we're going to put a break at this point. Like right. how much? We're going to add you to yep. our research, to our research docket. Yeah. So, yeah. Now, now, many of our customers are energy healers. Yes. I mean, we of have course. a lot of, a lot of, a lot of people that, that do that. And um, EMF mitigation can be a real issue for sensitive people. Mm, why is that? Or EMF, EMF energies, because it, uh, it, it, when you have a lot of uh, different frequencies, and in this case, it's electromagnetic frequencies that are coming into the body, the uh, body's nervous system including the myelin sheath and the, the, the flow of electrons through the body gets interrupted and, and it, can, it can cause a lot of disruption in the body. And so people mm. see this, feel this as anxiety, uh, tension in the body, headaches. And so this experiment, we, we went out to an, an expert um, in this field and um, Gary did a lot of research looking out into previous studies that have been done. And there's kind of the same symptoms that keep showing up. Mm-hmm. And if you, when you go into the details of this, you'll see that they're, they're kind of the same um, across, across a wide variety of people. And it's kind of the common thing that we hear now people. Mm-hmm. Um, if you just scroll down just a little bit more, it's a little small, the type, but but um, there's, you can see the, 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 uh, the feeling of stress over on the right is one of the most common things. And, and when you talk to people today, so many people feel stressed mm-hmm. and they feel anxious. Well, it could very well be this soup that we're in, the 5G, the satellites, the Wi-Fi routers, the phones in our pockets. Um, and fatigue is the next one. Um, mm-hmm. So this, these are kind of, the, it's easier to read this one than the one on the left, but mm-hmm. we're talking about the same symptoms. And then after EMF mitigation, we saw a decreased feeling of stress um, and more, less fatigue, better sleep. Those are the kind of the three biggies with EMFs. Mm-hmm. Um, and um we wanted to really, we heard this from our people. We heard this in, in um, uh, the testimonials, but this was the first study that we had done where we got a group of people and we really did a scientific study over a period of time. Um, and that was uh, 45 days and then 90 days. These, these uh, surveys were given to this group of people. So 100% of the people saw uh, a reduction in their symptoms on, in the study. And so what surveys are they subscribing to that you use for the study? Uh, we use the Smarter EMF, the low, EMF. lower cost one. Mm-hmm. Um, all the 
All the uh, for the fee products have EMF mitigation built in because it's okay. so important. Okay, mm-hmm. so so regardless of which product you begin with or that that you decide to use for yourself, um, you're going to get these results. That's great. More, you're more likely going to get these results according to the research. Okay. That's well, really again, good. These, the, these were highly sensitive people, which, you know, many, many healers can be, but these were, these were people that were, um, they were recruited because they were highly sensitive to EMFs. So they were mm-hmm. a bit of the canary in the coal mine, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but we had seen, um, I think there's, I don't know if, it's below this or above there are some comments that we got from people um you'd have to go into the whole presentation it's okay mm, yeah, yeah. The, so. there's a presentation um link here which uh when when you go into the website you can watch the presentation there as well mm. um yeah it's an hour long it's very detailed if you're if you're a data geek you will uh, <laughs> you will be happy yeah Okay, so that's a really good one. And here's one of my favorite research findings that you guys did, which is the plant vitality. Mm -hmm. I love this. So let's see what. um... So we kept hearing this from customers, like like from you (laughs) Mm -hmm. about your banana plant. And so we did a whole series of experiments to um, look at, try to quantify what was happening. Um, And then with what Gary has done is he, so Gary's come on in the last year um, in, t- in our, our research team, is he looked at all the previous experiments and then we did new experiments with much tighter controls because the, the earlier ones are um, preliminary. So you do a mm-hmm. preliminary experiment, you have a small number of, of, of seeds, a small N as they say, and um, then it gets it gets bigger and bigger, and you do controls, so you don't know if it's on or if it's off. So this this last one that you're looking at, the organic wheat bushels per acre, that was a large farm. Yeah, this and is great for all the farmers out there. If you guys want to know how to, what can you do to get more for less? This is one of the things that you can do to your farm. Then the FLFE energy. Yeah, so we we you know there were control acres and FLFE acres, and the average was a twenty two percent increase in yield per acre. That's really good. That's really good. Um, now they yield more per acre, but the in the energy field, um, and even if you don't have a large farm, even if you have a small garden in your backyard, mm-hmm. or you have plants in your house. Uh, they're just going to be more abundant. They're going to grow more abundance in those higher energy fields. But do the um, do the produce are they bigger? Well, if you go, if you scroll up, um, this leaf this count. was leaf leaf count. So it was a really large increase. You can see from the control to the flagship. Yeah, almost um, double. Yeah, in leaf count, and the leaves were much bigger. Um, and when you get into the experiment, you can, you can, or if you go back to some of the older experiments on plants, you can see pictures of FLFE and not. And yes, the leaves are much bigger. Okay. So I'm going to have to ask this about um, modified food. Okay. Mm. Does it have any effect on modified food versus organic food when you send the, the energy field to it? Well, our... We are committed to only supporting organic farms. Mm-hmm. My turtle, I, I recently got a tortoise for the kids, the turtle, um, and mm-hmm. the, the turtle only eats organic. But if I... <laughs> <laughs> he knows better. So, yeah. I, I, so I tried different types of lettuce on him, romaine and you know other things. And, um, and when I put, there's only a couple of stories that he has provides certain types of organic leaves that he likes and so when i put the organic in front of him he'll rush over and eat it but then when i peep out and i i get the for sale romaine lettuce or other kind of lettuce i'll put it in front of him and he'll just sit there and stare at it for like an hour <laughs> and just stare at it and i'm like eat and, and and then my husband's thinking oh maybe the tortoise is depressed i'm like i'll stop it the tortoise is not depressed he's being picky and yeah. so, but but he'll eventually eat it he just won't eat as much of it. But when I put the organic produce in front of him, the tortoise 
will eat it and he'll run over and he'll eat a lot of it. So yeah. I start looking at my husband going, maybe we should follow the cue of the turtle. <laughs> yes, follow the, follow the wisdom of the turtle. The turtle yes. knows um, something's up. So, um, but, but, you know, it, it can get expensive unless you have your own organic garden that you're growing your own food in. So, you know, you're not putting a lot of pesticides, you know, it's not modified food. Yeah. Um, it can get expensive to always buy organic. So especially when they have these deep discounted sales, when they get huge um, inventory of um, modified food. So how can people, can well, people grow, buy? Grow, can, your, grow your right. own. It's, I mean, I got a little, you can get these little hydroponic systems and you have these little root um, places where you put the seeds and you can grow incredible lettuces. And you can just harvest from it. And it's oh, really so easy. And in the effluent environment, it'll grow so much better. It grows so much better. Oh, I'll have to find some section in, in my house. And my husband I mean, my husband and I have these arguments about um, the different projects I want to do. I wanted to start a chicken coop in the backyard. And he said, you know who's going to be cleaning it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and so I said, okay, fine. I'll give you a break. <laughs> so I'll start something else. But um, but anyways, uh, I love that. Now let me ask you this: What about customers of FLFE who buy um modified foods, vegetables, meats, etc.? They don't buy organic. Or let's say there was a big sale at the grocery store, so they they bought that, brought home. Does the energy field do anything to that food to help raise its energy level? Well, we, we talked before the interview, Vaughn, about how many traditions encourage us to bless our foods before we eat them. And we told you that we, you know, after doing this for nine years, and I've been doing a lot of kinesiology for uh, since about 2004, so 18 years now, and all those years and, and 9.3 million calibrations I've done, I never thought to ask what's the most appropriate level of consciousness for food to be at before we consume it. Turns out it's 850. So it's very likely, not guaranteed, that the FLFE environment would be a higher level of consciousness than the grocery store. Mm -hmm. And so when you bring your food home, it will be at a higher level. Of course, you can wash it and get some of the pesticides off, and then you can bless it, uh, as you know we just talked about. And we're finding with, uh, and we haven't done a, we haven't done research on this, on this yet. But we have lots of anecdotal evidence that, uh, for example, fresh cut flowers will oftentimes last two weeks in an FLFE environment, where they'll mm -hmm. they'll last seven to nine days maybe in a non FLFE environment. Mm -hmm. So we do have families that are saying that they're that the food is lasting longer in the fridge. We haven't done the research on that. We, if if it's true, we believe it's because there is vitality in the environment through the high consciousness field that supports all of life to be more vibrant, including the food. Mm -hmm. So that's a bit of a long answer to say yes. I'm just trying to give you what I know in terms of data. Yeah, energized food upgrade after one week. So here's the research on how it affects food. Um, open this up here really quick it was a survey, it was a uh, survey. A survey when, yeah. that we did when we released um the uh look at this i can't it's been a while since i've seen this um so there's definitely a difference between before and after according to the survey results yeah so it's 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 kind of the energy level of the person um mm -hmm. and mood and the digestion, how they feel their digestion, um, and the, the the timing of their bowel movements. Um, so all of those things were uh, looked at in this in this uh, survey. So and yeah, there was there was definitely an improvement uh, okay. in many of those areas. Well, there's so, there, go ahead. Yeah, so this is that spinach growth one. If you click on the details there this one? on the oh, this on the one. left side, yeah. See where it says full study, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this was a small sample, but you can see 
The left mm. is the FLFE and the right was without. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely a lot more um, plants that are growing. And that was the same number of seeds in each position in both. Oh, they were next is, to each other or no, they're not next to each other. They, well, they were in the same room in the same um, temperature environment, but mm-hmm. one had the FLFE field and one did not. Mm, yeah, there's one difference. Now, um, I'm not sure this might be a longer exercise, a longer research experiment, but have you done any research on FLFE pregnancies to see what comes out? <laughs> To see yeah. if it has a difference on mm-hmm. on how healthy the baby is mm-hmm. with in a in a FLFE energy field home as compared to one that didn't have that energy during gestation, done anything like that? Well, we haven't. But um, if you go back, um, we did do a a big customer survey experiment, um, which is at the very very top, uh, or no, it's second row down. It's uh, there. It is. Yeah. Um, so. And that's the kind of place where we could ask that question that you had that you're asking. Um, and we're creating the next survey. Um, yeah, I think if you um, scroll down, well, you can, yeah, you can see this. So, um, yeah, if you scroll down a little bit further, one of the really interesting things that happened was the the things that were most, common and 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 something like 80 80 percent plus um where was it um we got what they expected or better out of the FLFE mm-hmm. environment mm-hmm. so that a total of 84 percent reported the benefits to be as they expected or better so that was really a surprising number um i mean we know people love it and they're staying with us as subscribers but 84 percent of people you know, got what they expected or better. Mm-hmm. But the um, um, so you know, with you and your um, spiritual, uh, you know, your your spiritual path, two of the things that we that were highest on the list were turning a negative thought into a positive thought, mm-hmm. um, and the second one on the list, the second highest was uh, forgiveness. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so those two things were easier in the high consciousness mm-hmm. field. Yeah, yeah, you got to um, the the thing of forgiveness is um, in Buddhism is to let go of the, the anger that they did that that did that to you. So and 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 um and have compassion for those suffering, mm-hmm. tough life lessons, and oftentimes the people who do um, things that seem unforgivable are are going to be having the toughest life lessons. So. Um, it is a it is a hard lesson to learn the lesson of unconditional love um, that goes in with forgiveness, but um, yeah, it's part of the soldier. And then the other thing is reframing any challenge, mm-hmm. any troubles as challenges. Mm-hmm. It really helps mm-hmm. in manifesting a higher next best experience. So, whatever horrible thing has happened, like that car accident, that now you have no car and you can't get to work and whatever, if you reframe it as um, the car got into car accident and I'm going to get a better car now. <laughs> and they're going to give me a car that I can drive. Um, that's wonderful in the meantime and get back a better car after repair or even a better car after you go buy a new car. And now you have an even better <laughs> experience. So just reframing yeah. tough situations as challenges mm-hmm. um, really helps a lot. And when you get into that mindset, it's just challenges. So yeah. there's, there's no hills. They're just challenges um, mm-hmm. that you could overcome. And and synchronicity spirit will always help you every step of the way if you listen to the cues and follow the, the breadcrumbs. Let's go over one last research that um, that you guys have conducted since the last interview. This mm-hmm. research I found interesting about the random number generators. So Mm -hmm. um, the thing about random number generators that has been made popular is um, the HeartMath Institute uh, did a landmark study for over a decade, for many decades, where they were met, they were putting these random number generators at different parts of the world. And um, they found that the earth frequency, natural frequency, 7.83 hertz, kind of like 
frames per second, 7.83 frames per second. If you think about a, a TV, it goes by frames. The higher the frame, the more crisp, the cleaner the image, the faster the the um the shifting between um frames per second, the just the better the viewer experience. You get to see more of reality. The lower the frames, the slower the image is, the more pixelated it is, the mm -hmm. slower it um the, the picture moves. That's exactly how physical reality is created. Okay, the higher frequencies, everything is more light, everything is more lush, et cetera, et cetera. And the lower, everything is slower, more sluggish, a little more discombobulated. Same exact thing. And in Buddhism, we have the same the same exact analogies when we try to understand uh, reality and how it is experienced in the higher frequencies versus the lower frequencies of consciousness. Um, so the thing with the random number generators is that they found that somewhere in the mid 80s to 90s the the random number generators were uh picking up higher frequencies of the earth the earth was raising her frequency and for a long time it didn't do anything and then all of a sudden it went up to 10 hertz 14 hertz 20 hertz 30 hertz and they're going whoa something is happening with earth that she is basically accelerating her energetic frequency her consciousness if you want to say that and when they when, and they look at the random number generators, they found that the random number generators would um, start calibrating at specific areas where there was going to be a mass event like 9-11 or an earthquake or a tsunami or, mm -hmm. you know, a bombing of a building. So anytime there was a mass major event in a specific area all around the world, the number generators in that specific mm -hmm. area will start calibrating and, and basically letting the researchers in Princeton, that's where the HeartMath Institute mm -hmm. was at the time, know, ooh, something's happening in India, something's happening mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. China, et cetera, et cetera. And that's how they recognize that what changed is all the people in that area in were feeling the energy of the impending event about four hours or so before the event happened, which means that everyone is connected. Everyone is one. And that's how the technology was able to locate an event that's going to happen that's big in a specific area of the world because mm -hmm. the people in that area, all their hearts were raising in frequency and it was sending out mm -hmm. the energy. Our heart is sending out this energy mm -hmm. to the area that something's happening. So it's much like when animals in the wild, animals pick up the subtle clues of changes in the environment. And so when they feel the energy of a tsunami coming before it happens, all the animals mm. run to the hills. So if all the animals are running to the hills while the humans are looking around going, what's going on? Let's go into the water and pick up the shells, you know, 50 feet into the water and all that kind of stuff because they're not following well, all the animals are saying, we hear and feel an energy field that there is something big that's going to happen here. So we're running for the high mountains. And that's how in like natural um, events like tsunamis, a lot of anim animals aren't effective, unlike humans who don't pick up mm. these subtle cues. Um, and all the animals are connected and they already know this. And we are as well. We just don't turn this aspect of ourselves on. But um, the random number generators and the Schumann Resonance Project with the Global Consciousness um, Project of the HeartMath and um, Princeton University showed that science. So that's the background of it. I'll put that link in the show notes for you guys who never heard of it before. Mm -hmm. But how did you use the FLFE field with the random number generators? What did you guys find? Well, yeah, since that's known that consciousness can affect random number generators, we did this experiment with IONS, the Institute of Noetic Sciences, in their lab building. They have a large Faraday cage. So this is a room size stainless steel uh, cage that keeps all electromagnetic radiation away. 
Like Mm -hmm. you can't be on the cell phone in there. Right. So nothing gets in. So nothing gets in that could, could affect the, the random number generators. So in the corner, they put um, four sets of random number generators in each corner. There were actually four random number generators. So there was a, you know, a whole 16 of those in there all randomly doing their thing. So we activated the FLFV field within that space. Mm-hmm. And we weren't sure what would happen. Um, and the experiment really turned out to be evidence of the, of the FLFV field activating. Because during the time that we activated the field, they saw those random number generators become not random. Okay. And they were inter- there was these interactions between um, the the number generators where they became sort of synced. So some of them became they would see these kind of waves of synchronicity moving through the space and the random number generators. So it created a uh, so they said something's happening. Like during this time there was there was an event occurring and the only effect was the FLFV field at that time okay so so in the website research page um you have condition a where there was no field and they had the four uh, round, random number generators in their location in the Faraday cage mm-hmm. and it looks like it's just static and then condition b in the same environment um you turn on the field and then you see all this connectors and the numbers are changing. So wh- what is that saying when the number is randomized? Well, the, the, um, the randomized, when they're randomized, they're totally random. So you can in condition a, there's no connection between those generators. They're all independently random randomized. Right. All right. So when FLFV was activated, those there started to be connections between those random number generators. So what would happen is two of those random number generators, for example, would start to be making either the same output or very similar output. Yeah. Cause you have on condition B, you have the, there's, there's for the audio audience, there's four different locations and, um, in, in condition A, they're all just random numbers. There's no, there's no synchronicity. In field B, um, there's synchronicity going on in these generators. If you look um, on the the one on the top, it's two, four, six. The um, the one on the right, which they all started random numbers, but then when you turn the field on, it started to synchronize and work off each other. Um, the one on the right is one, four, six. So there's a repeat of four, six. The one below that is four four six, so there's a repeat of four six, and the one on the left is eight four six, which is a repeat of four six, and the eight is a double of the four below it. The two ab- above is a double of the four below it. I mean, it just it, you you start seeing the synchronicity, and right. um, the synchronicity is that they're mirroring each other. And that's that's this is a representation. This isn't the actual data. But but they saw a similar effect happening, mm. and uh, Dr. Dean Radin did the analysis, and he saw these kind of waves of synchronicity or waves of of uh, connection happening between the random number generators. Okay, so now I have asked you this question about the um, the experiment for the random random number generators in the higher fields of consciousness, whether you do it through meditation or you do it through prayer, or you do it through FLFE, but it, or, or you do it through your own consciousness when you get to that level of, um, of frequency. So in these higher fields of consciousness, higher energy, the random number generators seem to be showing that when you're in the higher fields, synchronicity happens synchronicity, in this space. Synchronicity increases. Synchronicity increases. So um, synchronicity is the thought in Buddhism where it seems like things that should not relate to each other somehow relate to each other and then support one another in creating the next best experience. So um, like, for example, if you're in that field, you might be thinking some about somebody and then they call you. And then you might be thinking, oh, let's go to a hockey game. And then somebody... Um, 
sends you a text message. I can't go to the game. It conflicts with my um my schedule. Do you want the tickets? And just you know, sy- these synchronistic events is kind of one after after another, um, like Stedman and Stegman, you know. So, um, but synchronicity. So in these higher fields of energy, you live in the field of increased synchronicity, which is in the field of the basically the angelic realm all the time. And these things become your everyday normal pattern of life. Of course, that's going to happen. Why wouldn't it happen? You know, yes, we talked earlier about Gary Schwartz. He actually wrote a book called Super Synchronicities for your audience. They might enjoy that. We, When we were talking to Gary several months ago, we, we concluded that synchronicities were one of the languages of the divine, letting you know that you're in alignment. Yeah, yeah. And I love, I love that we ended your recent research project with the field on the random number generators, because that is scientific evidence that when you're in, you're emitting and living in these higher fields of consciousness, your reality is in sync with um, the universe, with the spirit world, with whatever you want to put the labels, the angels, whatever the labels you want to put in it, but it's in sync with um, creation and you're in that field of creation so things will work through synchronicity and things will manifest that way so if somebody wanted if they're in when they're in those fields and emit in those fields from within themselves and they wanted to create higher experiences for themselves do you have a recommendation on how they manifest that do they just think the outcome of whatever they're working on in these energy if, fields if you hold an intention in mind and you notice the synchronicities that direct you towards increasing the likelihood of that coming to fruition, that provides encouragement, inspiration, and reminders that the universe is trying to support you. So that's one that's one way to frame it. Yeah. So for for all the people who are like who may say and think that. Um, they're alone. The universe is never trying to support me. I never have help. I have no spirit posse. Um, God must be punishing me. That's not true. You just have to raise your frequency. And if you aren't able to do it yourself quite yet, naturally, through your consciousness, you can get FLFE to help you guide to that level. And then it'll be your normal thing. So um, so let's leave with a last message. What is the last message you want to leave? 500 plus level consciousness, angelic humans living at this time. So I would say in terms of raising your level of consciousness and moving into the angelic uh, realms of life, if you will, the 500 or higher on the Hawkins map of consciousness, um, practicing gratitude is a way to enter that realm. Uh, There's sometimes not much we can see <laughs> that we're grateful for, especially if you watch, you know, the news and uh, and certain people are, are really hard to be around. But if you and if you can find things that you're grateful for and focus on those, that will start to open your heart and get you into alignment with the universe and all the positive forces that are available within it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jeff, do you have a last message? Yeah, I would say along those lines, love. Um, Just small acts of love um, for others. And, um, you know, that that kind of highest level of giving where you're giving and they don't even know you're giving to them and you're not expecting anything back. Um, Like giving the PIF or the pay it forward subscription that we allow all subscribers to give. But... But just in everyday life, you know, holding the door for someone, doing just small acts of love is propels us forward into these realms and helps everyone to elevate. Yeah. Well, beautiful last message, guys. Jeffrey and Clayton, thank you for creating FLFE. So for everyone to take advantage of FLFE's free trial offerings, please visit their company website, which is flfe.net also you can see the direct link in the show descriptions 
And thank you kindly to our listeners for listening to another enlightening conversation. Until next time, blessing. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Merkaba Chakras, where we talk Buddhism in the fifth dimension. For more information about today's guest, please go to the show description. For more information about Vaughn's metaphysical work, please go to MerkabaChakras.com. The views expressed today are for entertainment purposes and do not necessarily reflect the views of the host or replace any medical or legal advice. Don't forget to subscribe for more interviews about the fifth dimension. Until we meet again, blessings.